this session we're going to get started on a, a very interesting project here. Um, I've made a lot of DeForest re replicas in the past, but I have never made a replica of one of his transmitters. He has several transmitters that he made early, and um, this is one of the earliest right here. And I'm going to go ahead and make a replica, a complete replica of this transmitter, a working, functional transmitter. Okay, we're going to need a tube. Um, this is one of his first Acillion uh, transmitting tubes, is what he called them, Acillion for some stupid reason, I don't know why. But uh, whatever, it's a, it's a neat name. So we're going to first make up this tube here. And um, it's basically in the same... Uh, scheme as a spherical audio. It's a little bigger, it's two and a quarter inches in diameter, which is just a little bit bigger than a standard audio, and has bigger plates in it, much bigger plates, and it has a much bigger uh, grid and filament in it, made to where it can take a little bit of power. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, um, and duplicate that exactly. It looks like it fits in the standard audio type uh, socket, which uh, no trouble. And then the grid and the plate both come out the top. Just like in the audio, the filament in the bottom and the grid and the plate out the top. I mean, it, it, the guy just didn't have the common sense to go ahead and change that design and get everything coming out the bottom, which would have been so much easier uh, glass-wise to, to do. All right, let's see. The first thing we're going to do, we'll go ahead and blow the envelope and get it ready to um, to assemble and then we have to make up the plate assembly. Notice how on this particular tube the flare assembly is much larger in diameter than on a spherical audio and that's so that you can get this big plate to fit through into there. That that plate which is only um, in a spherical audio it's five-eighths of an inch wide so you just have a small base on the thing. The, the, the flare is just a little bitty thing but on this one it's going to take a good um, uh, inch to an inch and a quarter um, uh, flare on it to, to where you can take that plate and, and stick it up in there. So that's going to be one of the differences between this one and a standard spherical audio, aside from it being a little bit bigger. Alright, let's go and start melting glass. Here is how. It's quite obvious. Okay, with this kind of connection here, we know the filament has to be coming through here. So the filament is coming through the large end. Okay? So, even though the plate has to go through there, when you assemble it, we have to do a trick. Okay? Because the filament is going in the large end. And the uh, plate and the uh, grid connections come off of the small end. Okay? To pull that off... Okay, first off, the filament assembly itself is going to be made like this. We have the flare that will match up with the outside of the uh, envelope. So this will slide up in there and the filament will sit right in the middle where it should be. <clears throat> so what we do, now the plate assembly, let me show you the plate assembly next. To make the plate assembly, we're going to take the, the pinch which fits through here. Um, this, was, this was before I realized that I had it backwards. With, We'll take those wires and we'll make a framework on each side and then we'll weld the grid wires across. Okay, that'll give the spacing of the grid and hold it vertically. Then the two wires that stick out for the plate, we'll take the plate and we'll make them in two troughs like that and we'll just slip them onto there and weld it at the right spacing. Okay, and that'll give us an assembly that it looks like this. We'll have the, the tube that goes through here, this pinch, and then the grid inside of it and the plate along the outside of it. Okay, so to put it together, what we'll do is we'll slide the plate assembly in, position it perfectly, and then seal it off right here. Now once that's welded, to the, the glass is welded, then the plate will be held firmly in position. Okay, then we'll take the filament assembly and we'll slip it up inside the plate, the filaments themselves, up inside the, the plate and grid and align it perfectly so that they're not touching or anything. And then we, we go ahead and melt the uh, outer edge of the flare 
onto the envelope. Okay, that'll hold it all together. Now, one of the biggest tricks that has to be done is the evacuation stem has got to be sealed into the cone of the flare. This, this is quite a trick to do because we, we don't have any pressure that we can do. We, we can't pressurize it in any way to go ahead and clean up the mess. So we have to do it perfectly without any um, cleanup. And um, it, it can be done. I've done it before and I can do it again. We'll do it in a few minutes. Okay, so um, the first thing that has to be done is we do the pinch and we get the wires all put into it and we test it on the leak detector. That's the, the number one thing that has to be done. We have to test this on the leak detector to make sure that our seals are perfect. Okay, once we have perfect seals, then we go ahead and we seal the the uh, evacuation stem into the uh, side of the uh, cone and then we're ready to go. We're going to take it and we'll assemble it up into there. We, we don't want to forget, we'll have the, the getter has to be mounted on there too. We have to have that getter on there. <clears throat> the original tube doesn't have a getter but um, it doesn't last very long either. DeForest tubes didn't last but a, a few months and then they gas up. So we're going to go ahead and put a getter in here so we can keep this thing for a year or two. Um, okay, so first thing to do is to make the pinch for the filament. Okay, we have to have a total of five wires. We have three support wires that are just buried in the glass, and then we have the two feed-through wires for the actual connections to, to the ends of the filament. And then the filament will just be a W-shaped um, uh, piece that, of tungsten that just zigzags between the support wires and the um, terminals. Okay, I've already tried this design and it works very well. Um, it's easy to coat with the um, oxide material. We'll do that, and um, it generates tremendous emission um, because of the amount of surface area. All right, we'll go turn on the machines and get after it. First thing we do is we seal off the end.
looks real good. Okay, that's our envelope. Okay, next we have to put a, um, a stem in the end for the filaments. Okay. Here's a piece of this. A little hole in the end of it. A little of the extra glass on there. Even it out. Okay, that gets us our um, filament. Okay, we'll let that cool. Then we turn it over and we do a little work on the bottom here. Get it ready for the, uh, for the flare. That gets our bottom piece there that's just right for putting the plates up in there. And we'll just lop it off right there once it cools off.
it's real time. It's no no editing there. That's a, that's how quick it cuts. A diamond saw. All right. Next thing we got to do make the flare for the filaments. Well, that flare's got to come out enough to get to this tube. It's got to be that big in diameter. That's going to be a big flare. Okay. Do it. Okay. All right, we'll let that cool. We're just going to take a piece of carbon and run it up in there. Next thing we do is we weld the um, electrodes, a piece of copper wire for the connection. Okay, and we're going to use this is going to be 16 mil tungsten that we use for the feed through. We need a little bit heavier wire. Normally I use 9 mil for the feed through, but we're going to run 6 amps through the filament. So I need a little heavier wire um, feed through here. So I'm going to use uh, 16 mil. Okay. Nickel welds, this is nickel wire here, 30, 30 mil nickel wire. It welds very well onto tungsten. Okay. Next we do the, um, the lead wires. These are copper. And we use full power for that. Okay. See, and that's our electrode. We have nickel on the inside, we have the tungsten for the seal, and then we have the copper lead wire that's flexible and solderable on the outside. Okay, those are for the filament. Now we're going to make two more for the plate and the grid, and those we're going to use a thinner wire. We're going to go ahead and use the 9 mil. We have a much better chance of getting a perfect seal the first time using 9 mil tungsten than when we use that thick wire. So we'll go ahead and use that. Okay, this is the 9 mil tungsten. To, to weld tungsten onto copper, 
we use a, a layer of nickel uh, tubing. We take very thin nickel tubing and put it over the copper and then we hit it with extremely high current and the, the nickel goes ahead and um, melts the copper to being um, liquid and it, it just sticks good to the tungsten. Trying to, to melt it directly, uh, you never get it to stick. Got to have that nickel in there to, to serve as kind of a, a, a soldering material. I'm just using these pliers here to squish the wire down flat. It just makes it to where it's nice and round to where it'll fit into the uh, glass better. If it has little strands sticking out, then it'll sometimes leak. That ain't good. That gets us our uh, feed throughs. Okay, next we need to make the, the uh, holder. We just use a little bit of aluminum tape to hold it while we do the uh, melting it into the glass. This is just an aluminum duct tape. Okay, first we'll put the wires for the plate and make sure I get the right one. I want to use the uh, small ones for this. Okay. So get, that gets our feed throughs, and then we have the support wires. We have one that goes on the outside of the plate, and we have the feed through to the plate, and then we have one goes to the uh, feed through for the grid, and then we have the other side for the grid, okay? And that's going to be for making the, uh, the plate and grid seal. Okay, on the filament, we want the feed throughs to be on the outside. Right. Okay, that holds those together. See, we got the, the feed through, feed through on the outside, and we've got three wires that are the support wires that support the um, ends of the filament. Okay, now we'll go melt them into the seals and then test them on the leak detector. First thing we're going to do is oxidize the tungsten. This time we be careful so we don't burn those wires off. Screw them up. thing I want to do, I'm going to take these nickel wires and I'm going to heat them to get the, get the, um, get the oxygen out of them and that will keep them from bubbling. If you don't heat them red hot first, they'll produce bubbles in the glass. Alright.
right, the first thing we do is we just pinch the flaps down onto the wires to hold them in place. Okay, that just pinches down the glass to where the wires are now held. The next thing we do is we heat it up and make the pinch itself. We have to heat it up very hot. Do a very firm pinch on the glass. Okay. Looks good. By burning it off, it gets the um, gets the glue from the tape off of the wire. We don't want that glue on there. We have to do the pinch. Same thing for the filament. Okay, first thing we'll do is oxidize the wire. these nickel red hot to drive the air out of them. are now clamped in the glass. Next thing we do, we heat it up and we do the actual pinch itself to seal. Heat it up, hit it hard, very, very hard. To show that things don't always go good, here we have our, our seal, and if you look closely, you can see what's wrong. <laughs> oh, the other wire burnt off inside there. Oh, heck, it, it happens. You know, when I make these tubes, it usually takes me at least twice, two to two attempts to make them and uh, most of the time three or four attempts to get one good tube. So well, this is only the first attempt. We'll go ahead and do next attempt and go again. The main thing is you keep going at it. You don't give up. Alright, next thing we're going to do, we're going to test the seals on the leak detector. Okay, we'll go ahead and crank it up and over down. Okay. I'm going to do this one first. This is our uh, red plate one. Okay. All right, first thing we have to do is see that it'll pump down. If we got a leak, it ain't going to pump down. So, um, uh, 
Yeah. Come on, let's go. Hey, good. Spray a little spray on it. <laughs> it's leaking. <laughs> See when I sprayed the spray on it, it dropped on down. See the spray got into the leak and then did it. Okay, I'm gonna have to reheat it and pinch it again. Doesn't look bad, but it's got a leak in there somewhere. One of the damn um, one of the damn seals there is leaking. All right, we'll heat her up and go. This it, Try again. Okay, we got way on down in the green. Um, okay, we'll just go ahead and get our helium going again. I'm just adjusting the helium to I get some bubbles in the water. Okay, now I just take that and blow it in here. Oh, excellent. Not the slightest movement at all, okay? We're on the most sensitive scale of the uh, leak detector. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, this one is sealed. Look at that, going on down, the leaf is gone. Very good. <laughs> See, it's getting down there in the green. Okay, we're in the green, which is below 10 to the minus 5th, which is okay. All right. Helium going. All right, here we go. <laughs> it's it's completely tight. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. All right, close it off. Shut it down. The next thing that we've got to do, we've got to have our evacuation stem. Okay, we're going to put it on the inside of the flare. In other words, we've got to have this tube sealed into that flare, like so, so that it comes out the bottom. Because this is going to go into the envelope, um, like this, and we've got to have that, uh, that evacuation stem where we can get to it. Okay? The first thing we got to do, we got to cut a hole in here, in the uh, flare where the uh, tube will fasten. To do that, we use the Dremel tool and a diamond burr. And we just take that and we just grind us a little hole in there, and that will be where the tube gets sealed onto.
Okay. A little hole there. Alright, we'll change over to a different type of burr and open the hole up a little bit. Okay, this is a pointed burr. Okay, we just go into the uh, hole and enlarge it. Okay, that should do it. In our glass tube, we'll just fit in there right over that hole and be melted in there with the torch. All right, let's get after it. Uh-oh, uh-oh, disaster, total disaster. <laughs> That's the end of it. That's the end of it. Okay, see this wire here? It broke off. <sighs> It, it, um, it wasn't clamped very well in the uh, glass. Oh, we were so close to having a good one. Okay, this is the third try. All right, we'll make another one. That'll be the fourth try. Um, the, the worst that I've had, I had to make eight tries to get a good one. And we're, we're on the fourth try right now. I mean, I may have to go as many as eight tries or even more. Uh, but the, the main thing is I don't give up. Okay, now the next thing we got to do is make up the plate and grid assembly. Okay, these two are the plate wires, and I bent them right at the point where they're the right width to go in the hole. So that's going to be the width of the plate, is right where that bend is, is going to be the width of the plate. And we got to be able to slip that up in there, you know, to go in there, you know, like that. Okay, so. Next thing to do is to bend the grid wires out and make the grid frame, okay? Okay. The grid has to have a little bit of space in it, so we have to have a second set of wires going off to the side. Now, that gets our grid frame, and it is, yeah, it'll work. Okay, the next thing we have to do is put our grid wires on there. Okay, for grid wires, I'm going to use nickel, soft nickel wire. Now, for doing this, we have to use a different type of welder. We've been using the transformer welder for doing the heavier welds. But for this fine wire, we're going to use the capacitive discharge welder. And it, it uses um, capacitor is charged up to a certain voltage, and then it discharges it through the um, pincher. Okay, we have another pincher here. Same basic scheme as the, uh, the other one, but it's connected to the um, capacitive discharge unit. Okay. All right, here we go.
ici. Fin de guerre. Okie dokie, that's the first two grid wires. See, when you pinch it, it doesn't make any spark at all. <laughs> I just jumped out of my skin. <laughs> pinch it hard, guy. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, my old heart. All right, now that takes care of the side pieces, the grid. Next, um, let's see how tall it needs to be. It's going to be in there. Okay. The very top is going to be it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut that. I'm going to weld pieces. See, we want this to be together. We got just two pieces sticking up. We got to fasten those together at the top so that um, we don't have any trouble with the thing collapsing. There's our grid structure. Well, that's pretty solid on there too. Okay, I got to bend this up just a little bit. Now I'm going to trim the side, the, the little ends off the wires on the side. All right, that looks really good. Okay, that's our grid structure. Now the filament will go up inside there, and the plate will go around the outside. Next thing to do is to make the plate. Okay. Here we have the plate. I bent that. See, and that will fit over it like so. Okay, we got to weld this to make it one solid piece. Okay, we just take that and go into there. Okay. Okay. And that's our plate. See, these tabs get welded right onto there, and that's going to hold it. I'm going to go ahead and weld the first one here. Woo! <laughs> A little bit of juice on there, hey? All right. Ooh, it looks good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that looks real good. Okay, now this goes into there. Okay. Okay, now if we can get a filament flare made to work, I'm on attempt number five right now. I tried to. Um, Two more attempts, both of them failed. Um, so I'm on attempt number five now. We'll do that. Okay, the here's the tube. It turned out very nicely. I forgot to push the uh, record button <laughs> when I did it, um, but it turned out good. Okay. The next thing we have to do, make up the filament assembly, which goes up inside there. Okay. I'm going to bend it out to the side. Okay, and then the width 
of the filament has to fit up inside there, so I'm going to come up okay. I've got to do the bending first Alright, I'm going to snip those off. Okay. <clears throat> Next, we flatten these out. See, by flattening these out, it makes it to where when we pinch it onto the wire, we don't break the wire. If we have the round cross section against the wire and, and squeeze it, it'll, uh, it'll cut the wire. Cut through the wire. We don't want to do that. Okay. And then, we just bend these over. So. Okay, see that makes a little hook there and we put the filament wire through there and then pinch it down on it and that makes the connection. Okay, the center wire is the center support. Okay. Okay, now we need, I've got to bend half. Okay, is that going to be right? Still very low. See, I want it to be up as high as possible, but I don't want it to short in the bottom of, in the in the top of the tube there. Not exactly even, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, that gets our two upper filament supports. Okay, now I've got to do the same thing down on the bottom. <clears throat> There's our filament support. So the wire will start here. It goes up over this one, comes down over that one, then up that one, and then down to here, and be welded on the ends, making a, an upside down W shape. Okay? Okay, the next thing to do is to put the wire. It, it cannot touch. It does not have enough room. It comes within about a sixteenth of an inch of touching up on the top, but it, it does not touch, so we're okay. Okay, now, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to coat it with oxide, with the um, we want the barium um, oxide, it's a mixture of barium and strontium carbonate, and we're going to go ahead and paint it with that. Okay, we got the torch lit, and that's what we use to dry it quick. So what I do is I take the brush, a little drop on there, and Okay. Oops, I got it in the flame. I don't want to do that. Okay. That's going to do it. Okay. Alright, the next thing to do is we have to put a getter on it. Now, this will be up inside there, like that. So the getter is going to have to go 
Okay. It'll have to go off to the side. We don't want it on the side, on this side here. We want it um, broadside to it, okay? Okay, now we've got, a, got the vertical lathe finally working. It, it had some problems with the, uh, with the jaws and I got that all fixed up. And we've got our uh, tube assembly here ready to go. See, by having it vertical, we let gravity hold it in place. If I had to hold it in the lathe over here, the horizontal lathe, trying to see down in there to make sure it was perfectly aligned, oh my, no way. It would be impossible. That should be good enough preheat. Okay, now I'm going to just take the small torch and play that on there and just warm up that joint and get it up to flare. Once it starts flaring, then we won't have any more uh, likelihood of cracking it. That looks good. See, with this big, huge uh, flame here, it'll warm up quicker. Okay, it's starting to flare. It's just, just going to go here. We'll just have to fill it in. Because it's just so perfectly positioned. Okay. Not fun. I'm just sealing that edge together. Okay. Now, we're completely sealed together all the way to here. Now, I'm going to warm this up. Got to push that down. Okay. Push that down. Push here. Okay, and then I'm going to heat the envelope and push it in. Okay. Push it in. Okay, that's good enough. Okay. See, the gap is getting smaller if I do that. Okay. That's good enough. Okay, get some more filler. Okay, the base is on there. Now, there's one more thing that has to be done. We have to heat it and puff that out a little bit so that we don't have any cracking. So I have to put the um, put the hose on here, cool it off again. Everything needs to be circular. If it has a sharp corner, it'll break. Yep. 
hole right here. Oh yeah. Link. You see it there? See it? Little spark there? Okay, we got a leak. Okay, well. <laughs> That's the end of it. That's the end of it. I broke the stem off it. Oh boy. Oh, we were so close. So close. I'm going to make an attempt to seal it back on there, but I don't think I can. So I have to work at it from the outside that I, I can't do anything. Oh, hell. taking this glass filler and using it to stick the glass. Okay, well, let me see what happens here. Careful. Nope, got a leak. See it? It's only on the outside. Well, okay, well, I heated it again. I don't know if this tube works. It, it will be one of God's greatest gifts to an idiot. <laughs> it's tight. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. It's tight. Thank you, God. See, right now the... Uh, the vacuum system, this is just the mechanical pump taking it down. 100 microns, one tenth of a torque. <coughs> we get down to around 70, we'll turn on the diffusion pump. Okay, we'll get the oven put on it. Okay. Just because the tube failed doesn't mean we can't do something with it. Okay, the tube itself has a tremendous crack that went all the way around here and then up into the inside, which um, makes it to where it's impossible to, you know, there's no way to work on that and seal it because the crack went up inside where we can't get to it with a torch. But we can epoxy it. I put epoxy on it to seal it. And this will let us go ahead and fire it up. The, the tube is in, you know, it's all ready to fire up. But uh, it just can't be sealed off and last any amount of time. I mean, if we seal it off after we vacuum it, uh, it'll gas up within a, a day or two because we can't bake it. The, the, the epoxy is good for about uh, 300 or 400 degrees, I think. 
I, I'd have to look at the thing. It's that 1C type vacuum epoxy. And um, it's, it's pretty good epoxy, but uh, you, know, you can't bake it at 900 degrees or anything. What you really need to bake the tube at to, to make it last. Got an adapter here that adapts this tube stem onto a standard flange. And we'll connect that onto the vacuum system and see what we can do. Well, this is the little bench top uh, vacuum system that um, I use for in the lab. Uh, this is, you know, we're now inside the electronics lab rather than out in the shop. This is a little more practical for doing things in the summer and the winter when the weather is awful. Summer it's too hot, winter it's too cold out in the shop. And Okay. You can see the filaments lighting up inside there. All right. What? You come to supervise? Huh? Did you come to supervise? Whenever I get stuff going, she comes in here to supervise. My little supervisor kitty. Yes, you can be in the picture. Okay, now we're down to ready to turn the turbo on. You see how quick that went down. There's that 100 microns. Look how fast that's going down with that turbo. See, okay, that's down to less than one micron. See, the turbo's only, we're only at about a third speed right now on the turbo. Okay, we're down to, it's not registering. Okay, we'll go to the next higher scale. Okay, that'll take a, about 10 seconds for it to register. Okay. And we're reading um, about 5 times 10 to the minus 4th. The pumping is slower as we get lower in pressure because it's outgassing profusely. Alright, we'll let that sit for about 2 hours. And um, see, right now the gauge is sitting right here at the base. It's right on the input to the turbo. So, we have a big pressure drop. I mean, the, the we could have 10 to the minus fifth torr at the base right here, and when we go up through this tubing here into the tube, we could be at maybe 10 to the minus third, one micron. We could have that much pressure drop through that stem down into the rest of the uh, uh, into the pump itself where we're measuring. So even though we're measuring just very close to 10 to the minus 5th torr, here, up here, it's going to be two orders of magnitude higher because it's outgassing profusely in there and it, it's going to have to um, sit for a while to um, completely outgas. We're getting a blue glow inside, so... Alright, getting two and a half milliamps, which is nothing. It means we still got a lot of pressure in there. Okay, the blue glow is gradually going down. Ooh, we're, we're above 10 to the minus 5th torr right now. So it's just liberating gas like all get out. The transconductance of about 100 right now, which is very bad. Getting about 10 milliamps of plate current with 90 volts. When we cut it down into its good operating region, we get a transconductance of up to 400. But it, what it means is that the, um, the filament is uh, uh, saturated. We've got to let the uh, pressure get out of there to where um, the filament can be heated up. <clears throat> We're still at 10 to the minus 5th torr. It's going to take it a while to pump down. If we let the blue glow go, it'll destroy the filament. So we um, We've got to keep it down below the blue glow. Just a little bit of plate, plate voltage increase, it really runs that gain up. That's 2,000. 
plate voltage of about um, 100. Not exactly sure why the transconductance is dropping. The vacuum is doing good. We're down uh, about 3 times 10 to the minus 6 to now. Okay. About 310 volts, holding right at about 49 milliamps. We're at 10 to the minus 6 core now on the, on the uh, base where the gauge tube is. 50 milliamps is the limits of this particular uh, power supply. I'm going to rebuild this completely. Ooh, that tube is hot. 15 watts going into it. That tube is hot. Okay, so it stabilizes out about 700 transconductance, 50 milliamps at 310 volts plate voltage. Throughout about six, a little over 6 volts at 3 amps for the filament. Increasing it is not um, bringing the um, current up anymore. The plate voltage will. I don't have any more. 300, 310 as high as this will go. Oh, no, well, I'm going to shut it down. Turn the vacuum gauge off. Turn the turbo off. You want to be in the picture? Come here, baby. Oh, you can be in the picture. Okay, you can see what we're doing. You see what we're doing there? Yes. You see what we do it? We're testing the tube. Yeah, you can reach out there and put your nose on it. It'll burn your nose. <laughs> okay, we've got it on the uh, on the main vacuum system out in the shop, so we have access to the uh, glass uh, torch to seal it off. What I'm going to do? I'm going to seal it off just for the heck of it. You know, it's not going to last because it it um, it hasn't been baked. Um, okay, let's see. We're going to see how it works. All right. About six volts. Going higher than six volts doesn't increase the um, doesn't increase the gain. So um, that's it. Okay. So the tube is working. Let's go ahead and flash together. I don't know if these are going to work. We're heating them up to full flat. There we go. There's a little bit of flash there. Okay, the other one. That's all we're going to get out of them. Okay, the tube has been sealed off for several hours. And I'm just going to hook it up for the heck of it and just see if it'll work. Uh, the getter looks like it has been exposed to air, so I think it's leaked up. You know, the gas that was in the tube is enough to completely run it up to, to, to where it has no significant vacuum. I don't know. I can't really tell, though, because it the, um, the getters didn't flash right. They were ruined because they had been heated up in the atmosphere so many times. See, we're, we're getting no filament lit up. The filament's not lighting. When, when we have the correct current and a correct voltage and stuff, and it's not lighting up, it means there's, there's air in the tube. And air has such a tremendous um, heat conductivity that you, you can't get the, you know, it, it radiates away so much that it won't, um, you know, there's no emission whatsoever. Okay, so it's, it's completely... Uh, you know, it's the, it, it, it leaks enough to where it, it just won't, um, it won't operate. Yeah, you know, having that crack in there, just, that was the end of it. Okay, it's just uh, one more dud. Win some, lose some. 